Hey, you going, people? It's uh <laughs> pretty rainy here. Uh, we're getting a lot of rain, which I'm happy about because uh, my pond's filling up. It was good. Hopefully, you can hear me. I don't know how this rain's going to affect this thing. So uh, maybe I'll stop it. I can't listen to it. Yeah, we'll just make it. If it doesn't come out, I'll do it again. Uh, there's a couple things floating around. Uh, I'm on a couple of pages on Facebook that pop up articles and things. And there was a recent article I read about stance, drip, and side alignment. So I talk about all three of these things in different um, videos. But I kind of wanted to cover them here. When you get into grips, the big thing about a grip, and I cover this in another video, is you get a one-handed grip so you can shoot it one-handed. High on the back strap. You don't want to get low on the back strap because that breaks your wrist. So it's high up in this back strap. Good grip, and that's a one-handed grip. And a two-handed grip basically wraps around your other hand. Not the cup and saucer wraps around here. The other thing about grips that people uh, do is some people are thinking thumbs up, thumbs forward, or thumbs cross. Now I tend to do with thumbs cross because that's the way I've shot a lot of times. So I do to where some people call it a trap. I trap this thumb and then wrap my hand around. Uh, other people say you put these thumbs straight here together. This one helps balance the gun this way. This one comes in and keeps your grip so it doesn't affect it. Um, so whether it's thumbs forward, thumbs up to where both thumbs are up, some people will shoot like that, or thumbs crossed, crossover, trapping, whatever you want to call it. That, that's basically your grip. And that's a short and dirty on the grip. Stance, short and dirty, you got an I, uh, well, I'm about to a weaver. You've got an isosceles where you're a triangle. Your arms and your body makes a triangle. So you square off on the target, and that's considered a isosceles. A weaver stance, and again, I have a video clearly on this. A weaver stance is where this arm is locked and this arm is bent, and I'm pushing this and pulling with this hand. So I'm pushing forward and pulling back. And then I lock that gun in. It also blades my body, so I'm less of a target. So when I have a weaver stance, I'm a lower profile target than if I'm wide and an isosceles. Pros and cons. Now, which one's better and which one is, is not better? Um, okay, so... The other thing is sight alignment. Everybody's going to tell you concentrate on the front sight. That's what you want to do when you point a gun. Um, you want that sight alignment to be right about there. But this needs to be clear. This needs to be fuzzy and I need to be fuzzy. So that is for your typical sight alignment on your guns. So the theory is if you concentrate on the front sight very clearly, and your target is fuzzy, and you send out, the bullet's going to hit where your front sight's at. The article that just came out was somebody was saying you shouldn't concentrate on the front sight, it's a bad idea. You should do target focused sighting. Now, I've called this point shooting for years. And a point shooting is I look at the target, I don't look at my sights. My gun is low, and I'm staring right at the target. So if I'm staring at this camera lens, but I'm below my sights, this is where I'm going to be. Now, I, if I move down on my sights, I don't know how close I am on it. I'm pretty close. So this is called a point. This is called a sight, where I'm concentrating on sight. Point, sight. So a point shooting at close distance is I'm staring at my target. And this article was calling it target-focused shooting versus front sight-focused shooting. And there, of course, everybody got on there and started saying their favorite. Well, I like this one and this one's better and this one's no good, etc. Well, I've been, I've been teaching point shooting for, I don't know, over a decade. I think point shooting is a great tool to develop 
You get better at it the more you do it, and I like shooting without my sights. Again, remember, everything I talk about, all statistics, almost all shootings are within grabbing or lunging distance. Somebody is invading your space. The way the law is written, you've got to have fear, you've got to be trying to protect yourself from immediate danger, and that normally means your target is close. When you start shooting targets at 15, 25, 30 yards, and you're aiming and you're making a great shot, you're going to have a hard time justifying that immediate danger of fear to yourself. Now, if somebody has a hostage or if somebody is shooting at people over here and you're over here and you can take a shot from a distance and take this guy out, well then that's great. Then you need to know. So, my theory on this is knowing both is good, practicing both is good. So. You should be able to line up this sight and get a front sight picture and get that front sight right on that camera lens and I should be able to line up. And you should be able to look down the barrel of my gun right now because I'm right on that camera lens. You should also be able to draw quickly and do a straight, my sights are below me. I have to come all the way down here to get on my sights. Now you notice I'm in an isos or a uh, weaver stance versus isosceles. And people want to argue about what stance is better and which one should you use. Again, statistics, facts, actual shootings, the majority, if not 90, 99, almost 100% of shootings, when, you, when that oh shit factor happens, the pucker factor, the fight or flight response, heart rate goes up, you go into spine mode, people in fear usually go into all animals, that squat, fetal position, fear, decision. Am I gonna run, am I gonna fight, or am I gonna freeze? Because maybe the guy didn't see me. So because of that, if you never shoot the isosceles, you're never gonna understand how to point shoot or how to uh, front sight or target focus versus front sight focus, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, if, if you wanna get accuracy, really pinpoint accuracy shooting at a small, like an eye on the head. You want to hit the eye. Point shooting is going to be a little bit more difficult to achieve that unless you do it a lot. With a front sight focus, I can get an eye shot on a head. So knowing how to do both I think is good. Is one better than the other? The article was on a, that popped up was on some female shooters or female shooting women with guns or something. It was on their news feed and they popped up this article and there was a couple guys in there saying, that's ridiculous, you should never stare at the target, you always gotta look at your front sight. And then they quoted Cooper or one of these other front sight or, you know, Thunder Ranch, whatever, they teach front sight. I'm always a proponent, do what works. The more tools in your chest, the better your chance of success. The more you have to choose from, the more you practice both, the more they become second nature, muscle memory, you don't have to think about it, and it's reactive. And to be honest, in an oh shit situation, I don't care if I do an isosceles or a weaver. But because if I hit my target, and I think I'm confident at both, and I think I'm gonna hit my target, do I really care about what I look like or what stance or who says what is best? None of that matters. What matters is, do I survive it and does it work? And if it does work, great. But I think you have a better chance of it working if you practice both. So you should practice isosceles, you should practice weaver, you should practice the squat, the oh shit squat shooting. I should, this be a point. I should do this on a front sight. I should do this on a point. I should do this on a front sight. So the more you practice and do those different things, the more tools, muscle memory, second nature, instinctual, the less things you have to think about in an oh shit crisis, critical incident, life or death situation, significant emotional event, whatever you want to call it, the better off you're going to be. So which one is better when I heard these guys arguing back and forth? I think I made a comment about, you know, they both have their place in all things good and bad, yin and yang, I talk about that a lot, and all good there's some bad, and all bad there's some good. So, don't get caught up in these people that are telling you, no, no, my way is the best. I know better than everyone else, and 
I know and this is better and ignore everybody. Look, the more you have, the more knowledge you have, the better you're going to be. So, I kind of wanted to cover that point shooting versus uh, front sight versus target, what I call point, what they call target focused. Everyone likes to change the name of things to make it sound new so they can kind of label it. But uh, it is what it is. Hopefully you get a little bit out of that and uh, went over the grip, went over the stance, went over the different side alignment things. So we'll uh, end that there and hopefully it heard me over the rain.